Hey, I'm Sean at Media Burn Archive, and uh, the video that I want to show you today is, I think, a good example of uh, how some of the videos uh, in our archive, uh, you really don't appreciate the historical significance of them until years later. Uh, so this was shot in 1982 by a group of filmmakers that wanted to document uh, current tech trends for a show that ended up never being produced called Wired In. Uh, and in the process, they were looking a lot at the video game industry at the time. And uh, this was actually one year before the video game crash in 1983. Uh, so they're sort of capturing an industry right before uh, the bubble burst. And so I think the most interesting story that we have uh, has to do with this one game developer, Jamie Fenton. Uh, she's a trans woman, so back then she was still presenting as male, but I'm going to use the feminine pronoun when I'm talking about her to be respectful to her now. And um, so she was working on this game called Robbie Roto, and they thought it was going to be the next big Ms. Pac-Man. Uh, they were very excited about it, and then it ended up just failing in arcades. People just didn't play it um, for whatever reason, and so other arcades didn't buy cabinets. So you also see her working on this other uh, video game called uh, Ms. Gorf, sequel to the game she had made, Gorf. And it just never got released. Uh, There's a video game crash, and because of the failure of Roto and everything, uh, she ended up essentially leaving the industry. So I think it's sort of a, a look at the, the larger industry in a microcosm, um, and sort of how things had changed uh, very drastically. Uh, but at the same time, she's very sort of prescient about what the future of games uh, will be. So I hope you enjoy it. And I also just want to say thanks to uh, Galloping Ghost, who let me uh, shoot some of the footage of the arcade cabinets in the gameplay. It certainly looks like Roto's getting a good response, although it's not real easy to tell from one of these games if it's you know, really going to take off or not. At that point, things actually looked pretty encouraging relative to Roto. It seemed to generate a lot of interest. But I was told by the president of the company that they generally don't put too much stock in what people say at those things because they, that what the people are going to go home and read the earning reports and then they're going to make up their mind. They're smart enough not to buy something just because it looks nice. So I guess that was true because uh, <laughs> after that, <laughs> <laughs> Things started going downhill. Well, this is supposed to be Bally's big new, you know, answer to Pac-Man and all of that kind of stuff. The next Pac-Man, the next generation. What do you think? It's pretty weird. I don't. I think it's uh, above me. I think it's beyond me, actually. <laughs> uh, we're still actually out trying to do research to figure out what went wrong. But one theory is, is that the game actually was a little too complicated for the average American video game player. And since the shill, as we call her, that part of the game which plays during the game over to tell you how to play and stuff, wasn't real clear on what the theme of Roto was and how to play it, that it's possible that they, uh, lots of people sort of didn't notice it because it didn't make a lot of sense. I, I, how, do you, uh, how do you get the guys off your tail? That's what I want to know. Uh, uh. <laughs> One theory is, is that we didn't give people enough aggressive capability. I mean, essentially, all you could do was run and hide in that game. And there was, you know, you had the magic button, which would at least allow you to have a power over the monsters. But it wasn't powerful enough to let you, like, somehow get a revenge factor against the, mon the spiders and so forth. I mean, you could... Uh, you know, run over them, but you couldn't, like, you know, make them uh, run into a cage like Pac-Man does or anything like that. Actually, Roto was probably an attempt to try to formulate a formula. <clears throat> and that's probably one of its problems, is we probably are trying to do it too much according to a theoretical recipe and not enough according to, the, to our own nervous system pleasure indexes. So, uh, in that case, it was a, you know, we, we might have led ourselves astray thinking there was. There have been a couple of other video games that have been introduced lately. Robotron and Dig Dug and Zaxxon are probably the um, 
three successful ones. And they came out oh, r roughly about the same time that Roto did too. So that would serve to indicate that, that people are playing games still and the boom isn't over. Uh, what often happens with the video game boom, so to speak, is that a game will come along and it will get a lot of publicity like Space Invaders did. And then it will, uh, you know, then they won't have another hit game like that for another year or two. Because, you know, we had Space Invaders and then we had Galaxians and we had Pac-Man and then Ms. Pac-Man. And now I, I don't know if uh, Robotron has really made it to the status of being an incredible success yet, but it, it, it's something we're expecting. I don't know. I'm hoping here to have the one that <laughs> is the next one. We'll see what we get. Okay, well, this new game, we've decided to abandon all this peaceful stuff and go back into uh, sex and violence, mostly violence. Uh, we haven't figured out sex real well for a video game yet. Uh, you can see the screen up here shows uh, it being played more or less by automatic control. This, this is sort of a quasi-sequel to Gorf that we've come up with. So it has the Gorf characters in it, and it has a clone machine, and it has various other types of ugly uh, alien monsters. But the goal here is to come up with a game that is extremely fast moving, where you are blasting away all the time, and you can destroy as many aliens in a second as absolutely possible. Because one of the constraints we have on a video game is that you can't make it last longer than a minute or two, or that it won't make any money and no one will buy it and put it in. The only way of therefore making a game more exciting is to pack more excitement into each given second. Lay down some shields this time. They won't get me. No. Oh. We don't have sounds yet, so I have to make up my own. I haven't come up with a comfortable laser sound yet. Okay, here are the controls we're using. We've got two analog joysticks. This control we use to like point the direction that you shoot in, and this control controls motion. And so you can move it at, at the rate of your choice, shoot in the direction of your choice in any of the 256 possible directions. The game has a laser gun that shoots at about 10 rounds a second, so it actually is about as powerful as a, a machine gun or something. Video games have been around for like 12 years, and they have always been popular, and it's always been growing. Uh, certainly people are going to uh, wind up, you know, maybe not playing them as much as they do now, but they'll still play them a lot and we'll still keep trying to come up with new ones. So I think the, the worst thing I could expect to happen is what might, you know, peak out and calm down a little bit and then, on, then when the next fad comes along, well, shazam, it'll go up again. Because I think now we're, we're at the same place that motion pictures were when, you know, you had to go put a nickel in a Nickelodeon and turn a little crank to see the movie and that eventually we're going to come up with, with, with systems for playing video games that are going to be far more exciting and fun and involving than we, we have now. Very far out stuff would include things like either uh, games where you, you know, strap on sensor suits and <laughs> special eye glasses that put you into this imaginary world and you know, there's sort of a 3D video game that you can play with your body, which actually wouldn't be a bad form of exercise if you could somehow combine those two together. And I suppose the ultimate fantasy we've talked about is uh, if they ever get the technology of uh, hallucinogenic drugs figured out to the point where they could give somebody a pill that would give someone a 20-minute programmed experience, that that would really be neat. New for 2078. PlayStation 9's new electronic spores tap straight into your adrenal gland. PS9 has improved retinal scanning. A mind control system. A holographic movie surround vision. The ultimate just got better. PlayStation 9. Teleport yours today. 
in the near term, I think we're going to come up with uh, electronic circuits that give us more realistic looking graphics. And eventually, of course, we'll probably wind up putting all these things into our homes. Uh, so you'll be able to you know, join the World War IV or whatever on your uh, home TV set and hopefully be able to play for a reasonably uh, modest cost. Farther on out there, one thing I've been dying to do for years is to build video games where the video games are networked together like the Plato system down at uh, the University of Illinois Circle campus and so forth where the rather than just playing one game with you versus the machine, the machine is like hooked into the phone network and you can play games with uh, hundreds and thousands of other players. You could have a an actual simulation of say a World War II dogfight going on. But you know, video games are very war-based. Uh, I mean, our Pac-Man and Roto are sort of trying to get away from that. But I think we've found that good old death and destruction works real good in video games. And trying to be peaceful uh, isn't nearly as much fun as getting to blast aliens to smithereens. <laughs> Make a defense shield. Whoa. Whoa, you got me. Ugh.